Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Blab. I am Holly Claire with the Social Media Advisor, and I would like to introduce to you a really good friend of mine, Scott with Tactical SEO. So say hi. Hi. <laughs> so Scott is one of those amazing experts at SEO. And this series, I'm going to be doing one a month, highlighting um, marketing pitfalls on how to get through them by using the right team. And so this is all about you, Scott, and showcasing the amazing man that you are in the work that you do. So I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> and before we start, I'm really excited for you to show the group um, your coffee mug. My, my lucky, trusty coffee mug. <laughs> There's no Tootsie Rolls in my house. That's amazing. <laughs> See, I have an iced tea, no fancy cup. This thing has been on every Afghan deployment and it somehow survived. <laughs> I don't know how. Well, that's something that the audience might not know about you. What is your, how did you get started in what you do? SEO. I started, I guess, back in 2004, 2005, technically. I uh, was active duty military, stationed in Georgia at the time. <coughs> and a um, project that was on, there was a, uh, it was basically about two months of downtime. Uh, where we weren't deploying and the duties we had at home could not be done because of a uh, uh, manufacturing issue. And so I essentially showed up at work every day at about 7 a.m. and I was home by 9 a.m., which doesn't usually happen when you have to do the military. It was kind of weird. Fun. Um, but I got bored really quick. After a week of doing nothing and a little bit of golf, I decided to learn what it's like to own a business, to start a business. And I decided to build an e-commerce website. I didn't know how to build a website, didn't know how to spell SEO, uh, didn't know how to start a business, but I figured why not uh, just do it. And so I, I built this website. And then once I built it, I realized, oh, there's this thing called SEO. I guess people have to see it to purchase your products. It was kitchenandcutlery.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I bought this awesome SEO training CD set. Uh, I, I can't believe I still have this way outdated but uh is that a vhs no it's uh cds actually that's surprisingly <laughs> but um but yeah so I, I learned just enough to get us get the site rank make a little bit of money and i kind of had fun with it for a while um uh, until uh life got busy and hectic and i moved to michigan and um I decided to just let that site go, and I essentially just got rid of it. Unfortunately, I closed the doors. I wish I had kept it in the long run. But <laughs> over the next five to six years, I just kind of built a few more affiliate sites, learned about WordPress, uh, did some more ranking, <clears throat> learned a little bit more about SEO. And, uh, again, it was just a hobby at that time. Made a little bit of money, nothing much, just, <clears throat> just learning. And it was 2013. <laughs> um, I was back from my sixth deployment, I believe, um, over in Afghanistan. And just before I was heading back, about two weeks before, my wife comes to me and says, honey, I have cancer. And then two weeks later, uh, honey, we're pregnant. Twelve hours later, I left for the next eight months um, for the mm -hmm. desert. And that was really Difficult. So immediately I realized once I was there, um, it's time to do something different in life. And uh, that's when I decided to take this hobby into something full time. And I found an organization called OMG Machines and um, some of the best SDS in the world became my mentors. And uh, I just really dug in deep. And eight months later, by the time I got back from deployment, I uh, had a fully up and running, uh, successful. Uh, actually, I had a few websites that were extremely successful in some of the most difficult niches in Denver, period. Mm. And I got those niches. I realized, wow, I can really do this. Uh, that's when Tactical SEO was born. So it's been uh, two years now that uh, I've just been doing this full time. I love it. That's so awesome. And I actually think I met you maybe two years ago. So right after you had gotten that launched. It was that spring right after my son was born. Yeah, I decided... Well, I didn't really know anybody in Denver because I spent majority of the years in other countries. And so I started uh, attending some networking events, and that's when I met the beautiful Miss Holly Claire. You're too kind. You're too kind. So what are your top three services, if you could pick three, 
to that cup. I'm telling you, brilliant. Uh, top three services. It's uh, organic SEO for clients. Also not paper brick. I don't do web design. I build my own, but I don't do it for uh, clients. And uh, I don't do social media, um, you know, uh, management or anything like that. That's I refer all them, those people to you. Uh, but I will make sure social media is set up properly in an SEO you know, fashion. Uh, so I, I SEO for clients, uh, rank and rent, which is kind of a neat option for people. Hmm. And that's a safer option because there's a lot of people who are have been burned by SEO in the past. And so it's a way for them to make one payment to myself uh, for whatever niche they're in, say it's roofing, and they don't have to pay again until it's ranking the top three positions in Google. Uh, well, if it never ranks, they That would be a huge account. win because they're not yeah. out of anything. Um, Just the initial, the initial build, unless, yeah. you know, and then they should be getting more business that's necess- necessitating the, uh, the fee. Yeah, Absolutely. that's cool. Okay. So that's uh, that's something I do. Then the reputation management is something I do on the side as well, which is important. Uh, there's people who, uh, you know, might have a rip-off report or an article that was slamming them or whatever it is, or their business, and they want that gone. And there's ways to basically, basically push that out of uh, potential views of potential clients or customers. Those so my what, when you're looking at reputation management and articles that people don't want, are there specific platforms for that that you would focus on or? Yeah, it's really, uh, in most cases, it's taking other platforms that are good. Let's say their Facebook page or YouTube video, um, or it can just be something generic of to build a brand new website and rank, basically outrank the bad stuff. So you push it down to a point where it's on page two or, or further where nobody really goes anyways, let's be real. And then uh, that way they're not finding out whether, whether it was good or, uh, you know, truthful ripoff or whatever it might have been or not. It doesn't matter. I mean, we can, we can push it down. Really cool. Okay. So what is the number one question that you get asked by clients or potential clients? Uh, what packages do you have? You get asked that all the time. Uh, and, and I always answer just one, your package, your custom package. Uh, I'm sorry, no two industries are the same. And... There's different types of clients, different types of competition. Uh, why would I rank a law firm the same way I would rank a mom and pop bakery shop? So right. packages, no, it's, it's custom. I, I do a custom analysis for every potential client. And uh, from there, decide you know, what's, what's gonna give them a great ROI, what, what is it gonna be worthwhile for my business? Gotcha, okay. So then what are, um, what are the top three industries that you work with? Mostly service-based industries, uh, home services for sure. Roofing, plumbing, electrical, painting, that kind of stuff. Medical, uh, surgical centers, dental, cosmetic type stuff. Um, and then miscellaneous thrown in there, I suppose, uh, flight school, uh, photography, real estate. Uh, so this, there's a lot of different ones. Uh, right now, I have a uh, uh, an individual who owns a fitness company that trains in fitness fitness competition. They also have a bunch of products that they sell, really cool products actually, uh, that are you know headbands for the gym, socks, kind of neat stuff. And uh, so they've come to me, and they're they're on a national platform. So now I'm trying to play around with okay, well, what makes sense for them, and what can we rank them for nationally, and is it worthwhile? So I'm willing to tackle almost anything. Well, so do you work with only one business in a particular category? In most cases, yes, um, but within reason. Obviously, with law firms, there's personal injury, there's DUI, criminal defense, there's family, whatever. But each one of those would be different, um, and they're they're not interfering with each other. Now, will I take five roofers in Denver and you know and promise to rank them all? No. I'm not. Too many other companies will do that. They'll have 15 roofers. And yeah, we'll get your first page rankings. Well, let's just assume they're good enough to do that. And most of those companies aren't. Uh, what, what happens to the other five people? Right. <laughs> you know, so I don't, I don't play that game. I, I try to keep it to one or two. Um, and two even is, is a big deal because you have two businesses, let's say two Denver roofing companies. And for Denver roofing, one's one spot. For roofing Denver, the other one might be the one spot. It, it flip-flops. 
And anybody who's in the number one or two spot, they're happy. See, and that's always, this is the reason why I wanted to do this type of a blab because of the fact that there are so many companies out there who say that they do SEO. And truth be told, they don't. And, you know, it's, it always comes up when I, when I work with clients on social media, they, they get confused sometimes with social media being SEO or social media being a website. And I have a very, very short list of people I can refer. And the reason why is because I've seen time and time again, folks are getting hurt by individuals who are just taking a ton of money and not doing anything. I see that all too often. And we'll actually go back to the Denver roofing example. Um, it's just funny. This actually happened a couple years ago when I was first getting to start tactical SEO. Uh, this gentleman came to me from well, a roofing company because he saw the uh, incredible rankings I was able to achieve in the law firm niche, which is extremely competitive. And so he says, "Well, if this guy can do law firms in roofing." So I showed up to his place of work with a proposal, and I did some analysis you know, beforehand. And I sat down. I said, "All right, sir. Well, let's just kind of go over the basics of SEO first, because you've clearly never had SEO." He says, "Yeah." yeah. No, you haven't. You might think you have, you haven't. And then said, all right, how much did you pay? He says, $1,000 a month for the last 15 months. And I just felt bad for him. Man, wow. he could have you John Boat or something, you know. Uh, you just threw all that money away. He got nothing. nothing. Not even some of the most basic, basic SEO that even uh, GoDaddy will do for you didn't happen. So it's just too common. These companies will take the money until the client fires them. But, hey, they got the money. Oh, that's just devastating. Okay, so what is one thing you want everyone to know about your industry or a misconception? Hmm. Let's see here. Um, I guess that most SEOs, like we were just discussing, really don't have an idea of what they're doing. They they really don't. They. That's why too many people get burned, and it can be tough for me because people have already been burned in a lot of cases. Yeah. Uh, the law, one of the law firms I work with right now has spent probably a couple hundred thousand dollars in the last two to four years on SEO that didn't do anything until I came along. Um, wow. And one thing to keep in mind for anybody who ever looks into an SEO firm, um, if they offer packages, in most cases, not all run. Uh, if they guarantee rankings, run. I'm sorry. Unless you own Google and you profit $10 billion a month, you can't guarantee a darn thing. Um, well, right. And and that's just the thing. Google is constantly working on changing all of their systems. You know, you've got the whole zoo, right? You get the penguin. I don't even know. I can't even keep up with all the animal names that they've got for all their different changes. But it has to be ever-changing. So that way one person's just not dominating the space all the time, I guess. Um, probably really, really great for their AdWords campaign and, and stuff like that. But for someone to say, I guarantee something, you're putting your credibility on the line. Yeah. Because yeah. how can you guarantee, I can, I can guarantee that I don't know if every morning I'm gonna wake up for the rest of my life, right? Yeah. Just something arbitrary and silly. One day I'm not gonna wake up. And I can guarantee that but I don't know what the next five minutes are going to be. I don't know what the next two hours are going to have for me. But I do know that right now, this is a possibility. And I could rank higher than I am right now. I mean, I just have to go by somebody's track record. I mean, have you know, I have a client say, do I feel 100% confident in ranking you with any certain amount of time? Sure. I feel confident in that, but I can't guarantee anything. I, you know, yeah. So if somebody offers that, run. Um, and the other thing is, uh, if you're working with a company and you're not ranking, you're getting frustrated, and they come back and say, oh, you just need to blog more. Run really fast. <laughs> That's what you crap. Uh, yes, blogging is important. Yes. Uh, but you don't just tell somebody to blog more. There's a system to the blogging. Every time you post a blog, it has to be done in a certain way with certain on-page SEO. There's certain off-page SEO that can be done. And then there's internal linking structures that can be done. It has to be done properly because... Uh, if you do nothing, it's not going to help or hurt. If you do it the wrong way, it's going to hurt. If you do it the right way, it's going to help a ton. Uh, that's just one small example. But was, I've just heard that way too many times from other people you know, who are telling me, oh, yeah, I was just told to blog more. That's a cop-out. 
Right. Okay. Just like social media is always going to get you at the top of some sort of search result. No, it all works together. It's a nice cycle. And you can't just pick one thing and expect it to work all the way across the board. It all works together. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so so fascinating about online marketing. That's for sure. Absolutely. Oh, Tracy would like to know if you guys have ever met. Is it me, me and you or me and her? We're Tracy. trying Scott, did we ever meet? No, we have not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, one of these days. <laughs> was hoping to see you tonight at my meetup, but hey, you know, I guess Holly, Holly and I are just going to have to rock it out. Oh, it'll be fun. <laughs> so for those who don't know, we're doing, Scott has a meetup for SEO and online marketing folks, and um, it is open to anyone who wants to come in the Denver area. Uh, at 6 p.m. So if you're curious about that, you know, tweet me on uh, Twitter, which you've got my handle, and we'll get you the link for the meetup. But um, yeah, I'm actually doing a presentation today talking about SEO in social media, which is a great tie-in to all of this because, you know, there's there's SEO in your website, there's SEO in your blogs, there's SEO in social media, and like we said, it, it all works together. Uh, I had somebody recent, very recently, I think within the last week, um, they were talking about SEO. They just couldn't decide, I don't know whether I should just do SEO or social media. And I said, well, social media it is SEO and vice versa. Like it's, it's all intertwined. It's all important. Uh, so there is no one or the other. You, you need them both. And for SEO, social media is going to be a part of it. And yeah, a lot of people just don't realize it's we're all family, which is why I focus on one thing and I do it well. I do SEO, organic SEO. I do it the best. Anything else, I outsource to, you know, such as yourself or web designers, I'll outsource to and pay-per-click people uh, that I recommend. Uh, but that's something that I don't handle in-house. I will I recommend people that I know I can work with and I know do things well, such as web design. I'm going to recommend somebody that I know I can work with because, obviously, the, the creation of a new website is very important to how it's done on an SEO standpoint that the web designer might not know because they're good at web design, not SEO. So it's all a collaboration. And that's a really, really good point to mention because if you're working with a firm that does all online marketing in one shop, how many people are in that team, right? Because you've got to have someone who just specializes in the thing that they're great at. Someone who just specializes in pay-per-click is going to be totally different and have different experience and knowledge requirements than someone who um, does on-site and off-site ranking. Same thing with social media. I can only be an expert or really, really good at certain social media platforms. But once I start adding on all these others, now I'm going to be only okay at all of it. Not really, really great at those few. Um, So that's one of the reasons why I as well like to collaborate with other people who specialize in certain things. Because I don't believe that you can truly be awesome, which is my hashtag. I don't believe you can truly be awesome at everything, you know, a a solopreneur has a hard time doing their actual business because they have to also be their own accountant, their own tax person, their own coach, right? Their own website designer. And so you bring in people who specialize in those things and you not only save time, but then you save the headache of having to learn it all. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to get to, uh, oh, here we go. Do you have any funny stories from your SEO experience? Hmm. Uh, let's see. Any funny stories? Well, I've definitely been on some fun uh, events across the country with uh, SEO, like SEO standard events. <laughs> um, some of that we can't really talk about here, but uh, there's definitely some unique individuals out there. Uh, but as far as funny experiences, I'm not sure. I mean, I did have somebody recently. I thought it was funny. Uh, send. Go to my website and they found me online and they filled out the discovery form and they're going after a national product. They want to sell their product nationally. And right away I'm thinking, gosh, this is huge as far as their um, uh, competition and everything else. And gosh, this is going to be a really expensive product or project. And then, and I'm, ta- I'm talking eight, $10,000 a month probably. And then I get to the bottom and said, what's your budget per month? And it was $100. I just, I didn't even respond back. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I just, like, 
somebody just they a lot of people expect because GoDaddy and some of these other companies say, "Oh, you want to add on SEO for two hundred dollars?" They think it's really inexpensive and easy to do, and no, it's, it's not. <laughs> well, uh, one of the funniest things we were talking about a few months ago. Um, <laughs> were in regard to a project that we were both working on together. And <laughs> uh, there was an analysis done of this particular website. And lo and behold, there were links to the website coming <laughs> from a variety of different places. Yes. And <laughs> I, I, you're blushing slightly because you know what I'm about to say, actually. <laughs> there what? was a, a, a series of porn sites forwarding links to this business's professional website and um you have to get those taken down and there's a process to that there is it's that was um the, the that happening isn't it's just normal actually it happens all the time but um but i just loved who it happened to and i was able to you know have some fun with it. <laughs> yeah we got a little chuckle out of that we did, we did. <laughs> i just wondered what you were doing <laughs> I was just waiting for my wife to check my computer and, you know, the history and say, like, well, what the heck were you doing here? <laughs> I swear I was doing an analysis. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> so we got another question. Um, for someone just starting out, what are the main things you would suggest they look for? Um, they look at for broad, broad understanding. Example, understanding their paint ranking, reading SEO, understanding how Google has changed over the years. That's a good question. I would love to know how Google has changed over the years as well. Um, additionally, I'm going to read it over here. Are there sites that you would suggest to um, to help with understanding SEO a little bit better? Uh, yeah, actually, I have a few documents. And uh, a beautiful Miss Sarah Hips, right on. Um, she's a good friend of mine. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for joining, Sarah. Um, yeah, that's something you'd have to, I guess, private message me afterwards because I do have some uh, documents and that, that kind of go over the basics of SEO, um, kind of history of it that I've given to a few other people. Uh, I'm not sure where there's an actual website to go to. I, I know there are some. It's just something I happen to have in some of my files. Um, but also, one of the great things that people really don't understand is uh, Google guidelines. It actually, that's something I can, I can dig up the link at some point. So again, private message me later, but um, Google actually has a pretty in-depth list of SEO practices and standards, what they want to see. And it's pretty general, too. It's easy to understand. Uh, it's not getting that deep. Uh, but it does have a lot of, like, there was a lot of things last time I read through it, which wasn't a few months ago. I had a lot of aha moments. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Because sometimes you forget the basic, basic stuff that can actually make a big difference. And that's why you do your mastermind and constantly are in training and learning new, all the new things going on. I have the same thing as well. I would be lost without um, my mastermind. I mastermind with Colorado Women in Social Media, and so there's 13 of us, and it's it's a capped group now. But um, if we didn't get together every single month and talk about what are the new platforms, what are the changes going on, mm -hmm. then we'd spend a lot of time having to research it on our own and not have a community of, of people to actually visit and discuss the challenges with. Absolutely. So well, important. I have one friend who um, actually, every time Google comes out with a patent, he knows about it. Because Google comes out with a patent before they change an algorithm or you know, add a new algorithm. And uh, he studies day and night. He's one of the top SEOs in the world. And then kind of tells us, you know, his close inner circle, what to expect based on his findings. Uh, and then I have another individual who has a few thousand websites that are ranking. And for instance, last weekend, a lot of people, I don't know if anybody even in this knows, there was a huge core update, Google update that happened. Um, and this individual is somebody who immediately, every time an update happens, gets, looks, analyzes all of his you know, couple thousand websites and sees what trends are happening, where and why. Um, mm. And the rest of us find out exactly, okay, this is what they're targeting or this or that over here. So yeah, it's really important. That's awesome. I love it. The ding cup. <laughs> I cannot get over it. Okay. I need to know. Now, this is the most serious question of the day. Mm -hmm. If you could be a superhero, who would you be and why? 
Thomas the Choo Choo Train. Thomas the Train? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's because you're a dad of a little boy that watches that show right now. That's his hero. So, <laughs> no, actually, uh, I would say my wife, in a way, she is an organizational genius or freak, however you want to put it. It can be kind of annoying sometimes, but that is not my expertise. And she is just so darn organized all the time that I wish I had those skills. So. Well, so your wife is going to see this and be like, oh. <laughs> she's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's in the medical profession. This is way over her head, just like when she comes home and talks about some surgery she did. It's way over my head. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I understand one word you said on hip. That's it. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't get the rest. <laughs> that is hilarious. No, you'll show her, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Being um, being that I do interview men and women, I this is a very important question because we need to, you know, treat ourselves a little bit. So I may know the answer that you're going to give on this, but I want to see if I'm right. So what's one thing you do to treat yourself and how often do you do it? Manny Pitty. No, that was not at all what I thought. That is so cool. Look at these. These need it, though. Um, they're pretty rough. No, uh, you, you're probably correct in what you thought. Disappear in the mountains. That yes. Was, yeah. yeah I, I just have to disappear every once in a while um, from either just an afternoon, whether it's on the Harley or the in the Jeep, um, just for an afternoon ride, or four or five days off the grid. Uh, I just have to do that every once in a while to refresh. So important. Yeah. If you if you can't find some means to refresh and refuel, then you're just going to be running, drinking coffee out of a toilet seat. Mm -hmm. That's one thing uh, Morgan at least finally understands now. Every every time I came back from a deployment, you know, after months on end, living, you know, working fourteen hours a day, seven days a week, um, living like sleeping in a six by fourteen box with three other dudes, uh, mm -hmm. it's just. Yeah, when I come home, I need, and also I'm not used to society here. It's more of a culture shock coming back home. And she understood that for about two weeks, I'm not me. I'm not normal, according to you know her, her normal or my normal. Um, and so I usually expedite coming back to normal by disappearing for about five days. Yeah, that's smart. Once a year, we take a week and we'll go off into the mountains, sit by a lake. We have a cabin. Awesome. that we rent and w I don't have internet awesome. and you know you, you have to take time away from technology yep. especially when you're on technology all day long yep. the only technology I bring is a Kindle that's it it's, it's you bring a Kindle oh that's a good one to bring yep no internet or anything it's one of the old ones it's just it's just something to read that's a great one so this kind of might answer this one as well but do you have a hobby and what does it do for you personally or professionally? Yeah, it's similar. Well, I mean, SEO, I still consider a hobby. That's how I got started. I just, I love doing it. It's just fun. Um, it's challenging and rewarding. I don't, I like a challenge. Let's put it that way. Um, but cooking is another big one. Yes. You know, at least once a week, I'll cook up something. Uh, I just love to create new dishes. I've been all over the world, tried some interesting things, some great things, some not so great things. And uh, I just like to take some of my experiences abroad and make my own dishes. So I'll take maybe something that's that might even be normal, that or people, you know, that's something traditional people have had. But I'll put my own twist to it and have a lot of fun with that. Um, but of course, again, off roading and riding the Harley is the other thing. That's perfect. I feel like we know so much about you already. Uh, one thing I don't know is. Um, I'm not sure if you're a person that's into resolutions or if you have a word <laughs> year or a quote or anything that you kind of meditate on. What uh, what do you do? Um, so I do set some goals. We uh, go over them every once in a while. I have a, a mastermind of five other, or actually four other, five of us total uh, professional SEOs around the world. Um, and we will meet uh, via uh, Google Hangout. And we every once in a while go over what our goals were for the year and see where we're at and on track. But, uh, but yeah, there's actually one that I've always had written on my board, my whiteboard, since I've started doing this. And it's actually a Bible verse from Timothy chapter one verse seven. 
Okay. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Mm. Which is That's a good one. Yeah, kind of refreshing, you know, because sometimes I don't have the best you know, self-discipline, or maybe I'll just get a little bit too irritated at something, or, or just be scared to do something, you know. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I, I too, I have, I have a verse, I have a word and um, looks like we might've lost Scott, but um, I do have a verse and a word that I really enjoy resonating on this year. My word is joy, you know, finding joy in all things personally, professionally, and being present in the moment. And we're going to add him back. Give me just a second. Looks like he might have some technology issues. Uh, what is the biggest error you see young or inexperienced SEOers do? Okay, so I'm going to actually welcome back. I hear you the whole time. I just had to refresh apparently the page. <laughs> So we got another question and it is, what is the biggest error you see young or inexperienced SEOers do? Uh, I guess actually the biggest thing I see by far is shiny object syndrome. Mm. There's so many tools and trainings out there and there's so many different ways to uh, use SEO. There's, there's affiliate, there's Amazon, there's client SEO, and there's so many others that I think people just see all these shiny objects and new ways to, to do SEO that they end up doing a little bit, a little bit of everything and doing nothing. Uh, so what I like to tell people is find your focus, and if it, if you happen to have a website of your own, um, do some in-depth analysis or have somebody help you. Um, keywords, what, you know, because if you, you think, oh, this keyword's great. Okay, it might be what you search because you're an expert in the industry. But what are the people looking for that service actually searching? It could be completely different. Uh, I get that a lot. So it's just find that one focus and then focus on it and do it. And just ignore the rest of the shiny object stuff. That's a really, really good way to describe that. Um, one of the things that I've heard or that I actually teach as far as social media and searches for SEO is ask your clients how they found you and what they typed in to find you. Yeah. Because what you may say, it might be a little bit more technical than what they're actually searching for. Yes, absolutely. That's a funny example is um, here at the law firm, because I also co-own a, a law firm marketing company with some local lawyers. And of course they've been in the industry for a while and, uh, I'm the first SEO they found that actually got results, but um, they've done a lot of it themselves, and, and they've always had a good practice of asking people, "How did you find us?" or "Why?" and not just "How," but "Why." Uh, and one, this, this is great. Um, their website. A lot of people they've had countless people say, "Well, I hired you over the other guy because you're you offer 100% free consultations. The other one's just offered free consultations, but you're 100% free." The hell does that mean? <laughs> free versus one hundred percent free. I mean, but hey, it's stupid little things like that that you figure out works and you implement it. I love it. Yeah. This has been so helpful. I mean, first of all, just to get to know more of you and where you've come from and what you love doing personally and professionally is is really helpful for me as a referral partner. But also I feel it kind of gives you an all around picture of who, who you are and the type of business person that you are. And one thing that I know for sure is that you've always been committed to making the customer experience an experience that they can remember. And you always fight for what's right in, in the online marketing space. And honestly, you do give a lot. Yeah, sometimes too much. I was told that hey, that's all right. I'd rather over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's one thing. Uh, I have a video on my homepage um, that uh, the awesome Eric Easted uh, helped me create. But uh, there's a point in there where I talk about my my uh, aspect of doing business isn't business to business. 
even though that technical technically it is, is people to people. Because I don't want just the cold business to business mind frame. I want to get to know the people I'm working with. I want to get to know their 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 wants, their hurts, their pains, their joys, and then that way I can know exactly how to help them and grow their business. Because that's obviously something that's important to them. It's a big part of their life. So I think it's just important to just get to know the individual. And so it's, it's people to people. Um, and when you're looking for an SEO, you don't don't hire the a price and don't hire a promise. Hire the person. Mm. Because people do business with those that they like, know, and trust. Yes, ma'am. Well, sir, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you for serving our country. And um, I just value you as a person, as a professional, and um, you're a great asset to my network. So thank you. Likewise. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining <laughs>